seeing that we've already gotten two directs in one month, I think that the possibility of a third direct in January is getting slimmer and slimmer. I believe that there will be a direct in February, but we can always hope for a January direct. The hype for the direct last February was high, and the smaller directs this January so far, with Pokemon and Smash, are in my opinion leading up to a big direct just like last year. Here is my fan made direct. Enjoy! The screen goes black and fans are brought to a nicely colored 2D area. They can see Rayman's hero's friends just chilling out on a nice branch. Fans are supposed to be led to believe that a new Rayman game is coming out, but what they find out is even more shocking. You can see Rayman eating some nice fruit, but then a smash letter comes right into his hand. He's shocked, just as I think a lot of fans will be, and you can see that Rayman is the next fighter to come into Smash Bros. Ultimate. You can see some of his um, regular attack strategies and different moveset. I haven't come up with many of his moves, but I think the stage should be ever-changing like a lot of the other DLC stages. You could, it would probably be in like a jungle or maybe underwater or a kitchen and many other different areas. We can also see that it comes out in March, so generally in the same time as the new Animal Crossing game. Doug Bowser welcomes everybody to the Direct. He then cuts to the chase and brings up a topic fans have been angry about since the launch of the Switch. Doug explains the long controversy of Joy-Con Drift, from an annoyance to a class action lawsuit. He says how Nintendo has been working on fixing the Joy-Con Drift issue from this day forward, all new Switch consoles, Switch lights, and Joy-Con pairs will be sold without the problem of drift. This is his first big moment, and I believe I myself and a lot of other fans will be relieved to hear this news. To finish off the intro, he says that here is the newest trailer for one of the Switch's exclusive IPs. The trailer starts just like the first Labo trailer. It shows sheets of cardboard being folded into a contraption. In this trailer, however, it shows someone assembling a sort of landscape with tiles. I present you the Labo Adventure Kit. Kit 5 in the Labo series. There are five different landscapes, each with a theme. You assemble each individually, and like the Lego set series Heroica, you can connect the creations into a giant game board. You start with the dice and finally finish with the last landscape. And when you finish the area, you unlock new enemies, music, and a new background for battling enemies. The kit comes with figurines for playable characters and enemies. When you scan the landscape when you finish it, you can add the figurines for that area to your collection onto the Switch. You put the physical fighters on the board and just press the enemy on the Switch in your collection when you want to battle it. You can also set levels and hearts for each enemy when you want to play it. When you encounter an enemy, you just simply tap the creature on the switch and you will use the Joy-Con like a sword and possibly other weapons to battle the enemy. It can attack you, so do be mindful. The background will function like Pokemon Go with an already set background too, but will vary for each area. So there you have it. After a short reveal trailer, the screen goes black. You can hear a theme from a game long ago. Suddenly, the screen turns white, and a fan favorite game pops up next to the Labo. Pokemon Snap will now be incorporated with the Labo VR kit. A, re a release date for May comes up, not too far out. After some showcases for some smaller titles, the final trailer for the new Animal Crossing trailer drops. It shows Daily Island Link and the normal features already said to be in the game. It then cuts to a new feature that I got inspiration from in the trailer in September. The 
The trailer in September shows someone with a telescope. I think Nintendo can expand on this with a new character, item, and activity. On any lunar eclipse or space day, Galatia will visit the island. She is fan made by me on Photoshop, like the Labo stuff, and yes, I know it isn't perfect, I just recently tried it. I didn't know what animal, and when seeing a cool colored sea slug, I knew it just felt really good here. She gives you a mission to craft the telescope, and when crafted, she will give you the space log. In a telescope, you can find new planets, galaxies, black holes, and more, which change daily and can be put into the space log. With enough stamps, Galatia will give you a prize of maybe exclusive clothes or even some new items. That's the main purpose of the trailer, and the narrator explains that all the stuff in the trailers is only a portion of the excitement in the game. While I would always love a Pikmin 4, I think that that's E3 material. A new trailer for Breath of the Wild 2 drops. It starts with showing Gerudo Desert. The camera slowly pans to Gerudo Town Gate and a masked figure walks up. A guard signals him to get lost. Immediately, the masked figure attacks the guard with a sharp blade, and after a short 20 second skirmish, he finish off, finishes off the last guard and enters the town. The, fi the figure casually enters the town and reveals himself as Ganondorf, but looks weak and frail. But behind him, the Yiga clan members scale the town walls and invade the city. The trailer goes black and introduces a fast paced montage of shots including two new mechanics, underwater exploration and cave exploration. Two mechanics Breath of the Wild needed urgently. The trailer ends with a release date of early 2021, my prediction. The direct ends there. Hope you guys liked the video. I got a lot of videos planned and hope you enjoyed. Potato Sensei, out.